bit brisk out tonight. To probably put a coat on. Wait. What on Newton's balls is going on? Oh, bugger. Not these things again. Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you on how to get the Sentinel Artifact in Voyage of Despair, which is one of the launch maps with Black Ops 4 Zombies. This video is gonna be one part tutorial and one part opinion slash review of the map, of course, starting with the tutorial first. Voyage of Despair is a huge and intricate zombies map. You really do get the whole boat, multiple floors, engine room, servants quarters, kitchen, life raft, teleportation devices, lots and lots of stuff going on, so it's really easy to get lost and given to, well, despair on this particular map. And you'll notice very early on that lots of areas of the map are locked off and not viable. Thankfully in Voyage of Despair, most of the areas you don't need to solve an easter egg for, you just spend your monies on the door and they open up. However, there will be a lot of doors that say you must first acquire the Sentinel Artifact, and the easy way to think of this is the Sentinel Artifact is kind of like the power for this map. You get that and then a lot more areas open up. Uh, they still will cause cost points to unlock like normal doors once you get the artifact, but you can't open them without it. And the map is hard, it's cluttery, there's zombies everywhere, it's easy to get killed, and the location of the artifact is not immediately noticeable. Thankfully though, the solution is actually very simple. All you have to do is go to the entire opposite side of the boat, walk on over there, and pick up the artifact. Then you're good to go. It does literally quite simply sit there shining brightly saying, hey, come pick me up. There's no Easter egg, there's no secret, there's no magic to it. You just walk over there and do it, but you have to traverse the entire map and you'll be doing so with most of the doors not openable, so there's pretty much one set linear path you have to follow, and it's not the most straightforward of linear paths. There's only one choice, but you have to go up and down through multiple floors, through little shortcuts, over the life rafts, all sorts of different stuff. It costs a lot of money, and the map is really hard. There's a lot of zombies, a lot of choke points, a lot of places to get killed, and you're gonna wander around not really knowing what to do, because you can't even see the artifact from your side of the boat. You have no idea it's there. You have to fight through this gauntlet of all these floors and dead ends and shortcuts until you finally get the artifact and then you can open up the rest of the map. As part of the story, you'll go past the first mystery box and your character will have something to say about it. It must be the artifact. It's transmogrified the passengers to create a box and I strongly recommend visiting the mystery box at least one or two times because you're going to need good guns to get to the other side and most of the wall guns just aren't going to do it for you. Getting a wonder weapon, getting something to help you out like monkey bombs or something beefy is going to be very, very nice. The new mystery box is also kind of insane looking. It's made of the bodies and the souls of the passengers. It's sort of a living necrotic thing. It's really, really gross. That was an oxymoron in a way. I managed to pull out the Kraken Wonder Weapon from the box and it made my life a whole lot easier. The Kraken is kind of a goofy weapon. It's basically a six cylinder cannonball launcher as if it were made by a steampunk pirate. Uh, when you pack a punch this thing, it roughly functions the same except instead of shooting what are kind of like grenades that explode on impact, it shoots much more powerful rockets. It's like a law rocket launcher, you just spam them out really fast. Kraken's kind of funny, it looks like something that I would see in Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Something sequel number seven, but uh, you will need something beefy like that or good teamwork to get all the way to the other end of the boat. When you do get up there, all you have to do is go up to the talisman and hit it, pick it up, activate it. It is on kind of a narrow pathway and zombies are gonna come up both sides and squeeze you, so you do need to watch your flanks. And then the real Easter egg starts. You can access the other half of the map that was locked off. You can go to the engine room, you can start turning on the teleporters, you can start really working on the Easter egg, but you gotta get that talisman first. And while this isn't the most advanced tutorial, yeah, like go to the other side of the map, it's really not immediately obvious what to do. And I thought some of you might find it useful. We're swapping over to the second part of the video, which is my thoughts on the map. And in short, I think that this is an excellent zombies map from top to bottom. The intro cutscene is great. The actual in-game intro with the iceberg and the character lines and the zombies coming in is also great. I love the setting, I love the overall art style, the zombies are very fun looking. Uh, the zombies were fun looking in 9 as well, but they're also fun here. It's like killing Victorian era, like early, like pomp British zombies. I, I had a lot of fun with it. I enjoyed fighting and all of the destroyed beauty of the ship. The ship is kind of the Titanic. It's like definitely totally not the Titanic, you know, 
and you're fighting in the richest, most expensive, extravagant, exquisite thing with the richest people and the casinos and the fine dining and the gold and gaudy everything except it's all like zombies and necrotic and destroyed. It has a very good, fun, destroyed beauty kind of look to it. I was also really impressed that the entire ship is playable. And by entire ship, I mean you really do get to play the entire ship, uh, bow to stern, I hope I'm saying this right, every single floor, I think there's four floors and a little bit of extra, I think you can go up to the crow's nest and you can get on the lifeboats and in the engine room and stuff, but bow to stern, four floors, pretty much every area is unlockable, it takes a long time to get to all of it, there's teleporters and other stuff, but the map is enormous and it takes a long time to go across and back and forth this ship which is fun for me, there's a lot to do. Voyage of Despair is also clearly the map that has the most main story in it. As you play through, this is the map that introduces you to what the mystery box is, what the characters are doing, what their goals and motivations are. They have much more interesting quotes on this map. It, it almost feels like this map was the really the only one designed to tell the main story, and Nine and the others were kind of tacked on later. Voyage of Despair, in my opinion, is the one that Treyarch clearly worked the hardest on. And speaking of hardest, it's the most challenging uh, that a lot of people have expressed to me. Uh, it was challenging enough to where I felt some emotion of fear and stress fighting off the zombies horde near the end of my run on this particular map. And that's the map's biggest weakness. Voyage of Despair is a hardcore zombies map. Like, it's really hard. For example, uh, since I am a zombies peasant, I know that my opinion doesn't carry the same weight as everybody, but I went and I talked with Noah and Dalek and Milo, and they all said that it was just going to be too hard for most zombies players, and that they wanted Treyarch to make it a little bit easier and a little bit more approachable, and they even said they considered it too hard for them. They had a hard time dealing with it, which is scary to me because they're professional full-time zombies players. They really, really struggled on higher rounds on that map and said, well, while it's clearly the better made map, they don't know if they can play it to those high rounds. And there's two, maybe three things that make the map so challenging. Number one is the map layout. Lots and lots of tight corridors, hallways, choke points, very little room to train zombies. You have to fight them and not train them. There's also a lot of clutter to get stuck on because it's like a destroyed dining hall, casino, engine room, whatever. There's a lot of little corners and junk and tables and chairs and stuff that doesn't really move that you can get stuck on very, very easily. And also lots of zombie spawns. So getting trapped is super easy. Number two is enemy frequency at higher levels is rough to deal with. The elemental shock zombies are annoying and when you mix in several mini bosses running around plus regular zombies in the constrained environment it gets very difficult to deal with. And we'll call two and a half, maybe three. There's no double tap, which means no rapid, f double tap was double damage and rapid fire, just essentially quad damage, uh, however you want to math it out. But no double tap, which means dealing with enemies at higher levels is gonna be really, really hard. There's no way to sort of like max power your weapon. So you're gonna be on the struggle bus if you let yourself level too high while doing the Easter egg. All that being said, this is still the map that I want to play. This is the map that I find the most fun, the most interesting, has the most story, the best art, and I'm going to be spending most of my time on Voyage of Despair. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe, and check out just a couple of minutes of raw gameplay. Drifter out. of you, Slappy Daniels. This one's racked with lightning! 
I'm sensing an elemental theme emerging. That would have hurt a lot more if I would...